on the floor in here. I was laying down. He was, yeah. No, I have a, I have a bedroom. Mm. Do you have a nail clipper in here? Do I have a nail clipper? Uh, I do. It's, um, not in here. It's, see, it's right there. Uh -huh. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's right there. Anyways, we started. Oh, wow. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Artist's Journey. Today is Sunday, June? June 2nd, 2011. 2011. Yeah, it's been great. It's been, uh, we're looking forward to 2012. My uh, uh, calendar, all that stuff. I'm looking forward to see what happens at the end of the world. I'm pretty sure something's going to happen. Anyways, let's just start the fucking show, okay? Here we go. <laughs> shirt that he rarely wears but somehow he's just wearing it today let's let's get you in here too i know we have a lot of space in here rudy you can just stand there right? i'll just do that my face is partially there that's fine there we go so hello everybody how you guys doing are you talking to us i'm talking to everybody just in the world yeah yeah just in the world. i'm sure some people are pretty bad are people, re are people responding? Just like, well, actually, I'm pretty good. Why are they talking over me? Yeah. <laughs> or someone just answers that question out of nowhere, and they're like, why did I just say that? I'm doing horribly. Yeah, and uh, I know you guys have a lot of fans, so let's just get the fans' responses, okay? <laughs> let's see what the fans got to say to you guys. Today's a big Q&A with uh, Jeff and yeah. Marie. Oh, <laughs> number one. There we go, shirtless guy number one. Okay. Hi. Hello, hi. Hey, hey. hi. Ah. Oh, okay. didn't make her cut. We, we did make North Carolina. Well, hello Whoa, there. Hi. Welcome. I'm she, not naked. She just saw a wiener before. Okay, now. Hello there. Hi. Hey. Well, you're dark. You you're in the darkness. You're in the darkness. Hi. Hello. Oh, he was definitely jerking. Well, oh. you know, we're, no one's going to stick because we we don't have our webcam. It's not but working. you know what? Those those other girls did somehow. They did. They were friendly. They were good. They were the only friendliest persons we've ever met, and we'll never meet them again. On chat roulette, by the way. On oh, chat roulette. Yeah, people... Yeah, yeah, everyone's busy. Hey, yo. What's up? You're on live. You're on we're here live. We're here with Jeff and Rudy. Now, you can ask him any question you want. Okay? You're, the board, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Go ahead. Caller from United States. What, what questions do you got for Jeff and Rudy? Any questions? Can you speak English? Are, Are you, you gay? No. Who's, who's that for? I... What do you mean? Happy? Like, happy gay? I'm feeling good. I feel pretty rough today, earlier, but I feel good now. Yeah. <laughs> I well, am... that, that's just not right. Wow. That is just not right. Nigerian. <laughs> that is spelled incorrectly. Yeah. Nigerian. Do we sound like um, a person of ethnicities? <laughs> Do we sound like we can speak properly? Nope. JK, JK. No, hey, you know, we, we are recording you, right? And, and clearly you have Santa Maria behind you, so I don't understand how you can sin like that so easily. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. into the core of his heart. Did you see that? Kick to the, Kick to the curb. He was just like, fuck, Santa Maria. Yeah. <laughs> just like, hanged I up. Always like just quick. Anyways, we'll, we'll let that go and we'll, we'll see what happens. That's we really the, need uh, to get a cam working, man. Yeah, Wilfred wants to do this uh, yeah. at the beginning of. We might have to restart this part of bank uh, with this loan. Anyway, so yeah, soul. fuck it. Yeah, we'll just see how it goes as it goes along. I'll just turn this off because need some time energy. So yeah, so guys, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth. The floor is yours. That was good. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Really Okay, just before we start, actually, I just want to get to sit down and just talk to you guys about comedy and all that stuff. Let me get this fucking thing out of the way. You in your varicose veins. <laughs> Because there's probably a lot of people out there who've seen you guys do stand up for so and stuff, but they don't really know how long you've been doing it or what you've been doing before or after, because no one knows what you're going to do after. But, yeah. but for example, like for Jeff, like how long have you been doing stand up soul for now? Stand up soul? Uh, I don't know, four years? Four years. Were you here when it started? No, I was here just after. Um, I was here within the first year. But yeah, yeah. And what about the, what was the scene like there before compared to now? 
Well, it was, it was a bit smaller, mm-hmm. and there was less performers. Um, I mean, there were still about ten performers, but now we're... Just smell that cloud of cola. Sorry, now we have to... <laughs> cloud of cola. Now we have to turn people away, because it's... Uh, there's too many people that want to do it now, yeah. so yeah. you have to have a list now before you can just go sign up. But no, it's too many. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it was uh, there was really only a handful of venues. The shows there were Tonys, yeah. and then Rocky Mountain, and that was largely it, except for occasional Busan shows. Mm-hmm. The occasional Busan shows. So then, uh, before that, you were doing setup already before and back home. Yeah, well, I was doing. I did it first when I was 18, but I kind of gave up oh, on really? it, and I mostly did. Uh, improv and then uh, some sketch and some uh, uh, I had a one man letter show that I did so yeah uh, yeah and then I went back to it when I kind of when I first came to Korea I went back to doing it so how, do you remember your first time going up on stage when you were 18 oh yeah hugely yeah um, where was that at uh, it was a place called Yuck Yucks which is no longer in existence in, Win- <laughs> in Winnipeg oh wow yeah and, uh, it's in Manitoba, right? Yeah, it's in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, Shout out, out to the, Manitoba. Out the Viscount Court. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I went up. Uh, I was really funny. Um, <laughs> and then the next, the next time I got up, I wasn't funny again for a very long time. <laughs> Dumb luck, man. Yeah, it was like one of those. It was more that they were laughing at how awkward I was, probably. <laughs> But I got laughs the first time, and then it took years to get laughs again. Do you remember any of your jokes? Uh, I had a thing about, uh, you know, why, why, uh, ri- uh, yeah, why bum a ride from someone when you can ride a bum? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Like a homeless person? <laughs> yeah, you give them money. <laughs> like, they, they make money out of it, and they get exercise. And like, but then you end up smelling bad, so it's... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was one of the first ones. So you kicked that joke to the curb, huh? I kicked that one to the curb. Maybe I'll revive it. <laughs> can revive it. That's going to work great right here. <laughs> Especially, like, in the subway system. It makes me giggle. It's so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect 18-year-old joke right there. So the, do you find your style, uh, in terms of, like, structure, or how you, like, think of certain ideas completely changed now? Are you, like, in a totally different mind frame in terms of, like, getting content and stuff? Uh, I would just say I'm more confident that I feel I'm funny. And you're just you're honest. You're yeah, stories. yeah. Because those are more on basic pure experiences of stuff that you've been through, right? Yeah, I don't. I should do what he does and write it out, but I and, and I don't I, write it out. Well, Sometimes. you you write it down a little bit, right? and and you think about it a lot more than I do, yeah. which I should do, but I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I have a different mindset about it. I have jokes that I. I revisit because I didn't know how to tell it before, but now I'm like, uh, now I know how to tell it, um, or what to, what to emphasize within the joke. So, emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna heckle you. It's your <laughs> question. Perfect. Well, like perfect. Go and goes back to Rudy. Rudy, um, do you remember your first heckler? My first heckler. Like what? Like that kind of situation. Worst, worst comedic moment on stage. Uh, I'm. I'm it's just a series of worst comedic <laughs> moments on stage. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know about if I remember my first heckler. I just, like, I like, experience so I like specific hecklers. Like when the, I, one guy said, he just said, turn off the microphone. And, and it was, I just liked the specificity of that. And it was like, he gave me a thing to do. And I was like, I like that you're telling, you give me some constructive feedback. That's what you'd like. I'm sorry, that's not going to it's not gonna happen now, sir. And it was at a uh, fundraiser, so like oh when someone God. heckles you at a fundraiser, it's like, shut up, dude! Like, don't be a jerk. This and is for cancer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have cancer. I'm not telling you jokes. You're gonna get cancer because you just heckled me. Uh, but I don't know. I think I don't know. RMT, the RMT crowd used to be well. It, it was that one guy, David, who would heckle <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the one guy. Yeah, and then he started doing comedy. Everyone like was like, oh, shit, he's here. Because he would, like, just yell stuff from the back of the room, and we'd be like, really, dude? Like, what the David heck? Who? David Tease. Oh, Tease. David Tease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, were you there at one time when he got punched out at RMT? And he's probably been punched out several times. He's the kind of guy who just gets in fights in bars. Yeah. But... I was, uh, I was doing a stand-up. I was going to, like, some time up, and then everyone was looking at me, and I was, kind of, I was looking at everyone. I could see outside he was, like, smoking a cigarette. Some guy was, like, walking by. I was like... Can I get a cigarette kind of emotion? He just 
see this smoke of Bill come out. He said something. Mm-hmm. The next thing I saw, I was like, whack. Yeah, the punch yeah. the guy. He goes like, fuck you, man. And I recorded everything on my recorder. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, shit. And I was like, looking back, what happened? I'm like, oh, he just got punched out. And, and then he came back after. And he, you know when sometimes when people get hit really hard, they play it cool. Like, they don't want to pretend nothing happened. Like, e- even they're, like, having a sandwich, mm. and they get on the fight, they still holding this. I'm like, I'm going to fucking eat this sandwich. You know, like, pretend, like, nothing's wrong. That was, like, the same thing that he did, but his face was all swollen, and he's, like, trying to tell jokes. I've never been punched. Like, I've never been punched by a person. You lucky Would you? <laughs> Can I be <laughs> <the> first? <laughs> <laughs> Would someone on Chevrolet like to punch uh, this <laughs> gentleman? That was a Drew Barrymore movie, right? Never been punched? Never been punched 50 <laughs> times. <laughs> 50, 50, 50, 50 first punches. Yeah. 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 It was like Jackie Chan and her. <laughs> Punchy T. <tea. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great movie. 50 first punches. Never ending pun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's punchles. <laughs> You can just keep going and going with this hilarity. Oh my god. Uh, pun, punch and Ivy, right? <laughs> punch and Ivy. Punch and Ivy. Was, she was, in the, was she in Poison Ivy? Uh, yeah, she was. The first yeah, one? Yeah. Poison Ivy. You don't uh, remember Poison Ivy? No. Later, Alyssa Milano took it, right? Yeah, she took the, the wheel. Second one? Yeah. Poison Ivy is like where she's like a psycho. I'm just thinking special. Batman. Her and Tom Scare. Tom Scare, who Scarrett. was on Cheers a lot. Was he, did he. He was, uh, he was Rebecca's boss on Cheers, and she fell in love with him and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like, she, yeah, so Drew Barrymore screwed Tom Scare. Not to ruin the plot, but... That's just how he... And she's young, and she's kind of a psycho, right? So Drew Barrymore, hot or not? Misunderstood. I, uh... Just Drew Barrymore, hot or not? I wouldn't say that she's a hot woman. I'm pretty sure I masturbated to that movie once or twice. But yeah, she's pretty enough to masturbate to. Mm-hmm. We've all seen her since E.T., so... Yeah, I'm kind of grew up with there. Well, uh, in Firestarter, or no, Fire Puncher. Fire Puncher. Fire Puncher. Wait, wait, my name is Firestarter. <laughs> this movie was Fire Puncher. Yeah, with David Keith and uh, Heather Locklear. Was her mom in it? I do not know that one. I host a trivia show every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you ever work at a movie store? Like that? I worked at a movie store for four and a half years. Yeah. I've seen a lot did. of movies. <laughs> Started when I was 14. It was one of my first jobs. Uh, worked at a movie company, moving company, and then I worked at... Like, <laughs> Not to be confused. Then I worked at a... Back in the day when it was a video store with VHS tapes. Even some betas. Some betas. Some betas. Yeah. Were, you, were you like up to that point where you seen pretty much everything you would even go watch like the independent or like foreign I films? watched every single shift and made a point to watch a movie I'd never seen. So, and I sat, like, I almost never left my chair. I'd just sit there, take videos, and just like, you know, all right, it's this much, all right, thank you. And then just like... Did you ever barter with people at the video store? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. They were, uh, really? these biker guys used to come in all the time. These guys that were, they used to be in the Bravos, and then they got inducted in the Hells Angels. And uh, they'd come in, and they'd have a tape that was overdue for two months, and it would be like 100 bucks. And I'd be like, yeah. There's it like 100 bucks on there, and the guy's like, hey, man, you want some weed? <laughs> it was just like... All right, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> just erase it off the computer. I was really computer savvy. I knew how to manipulate the computer well. That's so awesome. Yeah. Back at that time, you just like computer hacker extraordinaire. It was just a black and green screen. Too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it was Lots a of control. It was so easy to beat yeah. the system on that. It was like Pong. <laughs> just 4, 8, 17, 25. I don't know what that is. Lost references. <laughs> so you try to say an eight six seven five three oh nine? Yeah, that's the code on every computer. That's Jenny's Jenny's yeah. number. <laughs> So, do you have any obscure favorite films that you probably recommend? But that probably it'd be really hard to find. Uh, um, Bad Boy Bobby, that's one. It's uh, Bad Boy Bobby. Bobby. Bad Boy Bobby. It's Australian, right? Yeah, it's an Australian cult film of uh, this guy. Is, uh, his mom tells him there's poison gas outside, so he's never left his apartment, and she raises him from the time he's a baby to 34. And uh, so it's like blast from the past. <laughs> <laughs> and then he yeah you know, he screws his mom and stuff, and his best friend's a dead cat. Yeah, his best <laughs> yeah. friend's a dead cat that he carries around with him. And then uh, one day uh, his dad comes back after thirty four years, and he gets jealous, so he kills his mom and dad, and then goes off into the world uh, with a poison gas mask on, and, and his dead, that, his dead cat in a briefcase. Does that all happen in like the first twenty minutes? That happens in the first twenty minutes. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, just uh, the preface. And then he becomes the lead singer of a punk band, <laughs> and uh, it's it's like a really demented Forrest Gump. Um, what, what's that wow. other movie that I've fallen asleep at your house too? Oh, well, there's, uh... Because uh, it's, it's been 6 a.m. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Off the Mark, uh, a.k.a. Crazy Legs in Canada. Crazy Legs. Canada was known as Crazy Legs, but everywhere else in the world it was uh, Off the Mark. Uh, that one's good, but uh, another good obscure one is Leolo, which is a French-Canadian French Canadian film. 
YOLO before? <laughs> yeah, YOLO. Uh, Leolo. It's about a kid that thinks that uh, his mom got impregnated when somebody jerked off on an orange, and she accidentally sat on it. <laughs> like, oh my god. Uh, what bad luck she has. Yeah, and actually, there's another... Sounds so French Canadian. There's right a really there. disturbing incident with a cat in that movie, too. <laughs> like, it's a sequel to Bad Boy Puppy. Oh, I wish there was. Nicholas Hope, he was great. That sounds like a, like a Harmony Corn, Cormine kind of film. Harmony Corn. Yeah. Did you see Spring Breakers? Uh, yeah, I'm a big Selena Gomez fan. So. <laughs> Did you see it? No, I want to see it. No, Jason, my friend Jason and I were, were going to go see it in Toronto, but I hear it's weird. And I don't know. That's per usual, right? <clears throat> so, Rudy, how about yourself? Just drinking corn tea. Drinking corn tea. <laughs> corn water. I don't know why I love this stuff so much. But for yourself, like when you were doing uh, stand up, when did you start? Uh, I started in Korea, actually. I started here, I don't know, just over three years ago. Just uh, just because I, I remember I went on a trip to, to Japan uh, to get a visa, visa run, and then after I came back, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to do stuff. Uh, because you spend most of your time not doing stuff in Korea, mm-hmm. uh, if we're being honest. And so, I mean, I started, and that weekend I started uh, improv in, in Korea. I'd done improv before, but I started doing improv and stand-up. Mm-hmm. Just... Uh, just because I could, and there were opportunities. I guess it was something I wanted to do, but never just... But since you guys both did stand-up and uh, improv as well, like, do you guys find it? Like, how, in what ways does it benefit you for doing stand-up? Well, I, I think it, it helps me. My A lot of my act is improv, yeah. uh, just because my favorite moments are when weird stuff happens. Not necessarily heckles, but sometimes mm-hmm. heckles, and it just add, can add to a lot. I was doing a show... A couple weeks ago in Hongdae, my first show that I performed with musicians and stuff, Mm -hmm. and uh, I was like in the middle of bands, which is just a recipe for disaster Mm -hmm. when you do comedy. And uh, I was doing material, like five or ten minutes of material, not much, you know, it's just loud, people are kind of looking at you. Then some girl from South Africa just started talking a bunch of shit, but not like in a mean way, like Mm -hmm. in a like third grade flirty kind of way, you know, and, uh, third grade flirty, you know, just being a kind of a, like, meh, like, whatever, Mm -hmm. but it was fun, and, like, as soon as she started doing that, I was like, yes, nice, and so I could just talk to her, or talk about her, or, like, move from Jackaburn, Jackaburn, Sappers, Sappers, uh, and, uh, it was fun, she, like, punched me in the leg, (laughs) (laughs) she punched you in the leg, I thought you said you'd never been punched. What is this, Rudy? <laughs> I'm what just is a liar, this? yeah. I'm letting a lot I met in the face. Never been face punched. Uh, Kicked her in the throat, right? And then I just fucking nailed her with my, just shinned her in the face. Your taekwondo skills. Yeah. <laughs> my friend Ram <laughs> <Ramar laughs> got punched in the face one time. It yeah. was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Really? Why? It was, uh, we were at the bar and we were talking to this crazy guy that I invited over to the table. And uh, he, uh, he was talking, you could tell that he's on the subject. Like, he, says to the, he said to the guy, uh, Hey, you're afraid of my beard? And the guy's like, I'm not afraid of your fucking beard, man. <laughs> and Ron, Ron thinking he's being all funny and charming, he's just like, you're afraid of my beard. And I'm looking at Ron like, shut up, Ron, shut up. And the guy's like, I'm not afraid of your fucking beard, man. And then Ron pushes it the third time and goes, you're afraid of my beard. And then, boom, punch right in the face, and I start laughing. And Ron Moore's response is he gets up, and he's like, I haven't been punched in 17 years. <laughs> and I love you. had a clock. Yeah, yeah. And there's people all around that started laughing at that comment. <laughs> and, and the guy himself was just kind of like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? Like, and Ron's the sweetest, nicest guy ever, too. It's like, because I think the guy was expecting Ron to lunge at him. So the guy was just standing there, like, not knowing what to do. And then the bartender came over and was like, oh man, you gotta go, you gotta go through the guy out. And Ron's just sitting there going, I can't believe I got punched. And he was so mad at me for the ride home. I'm just driving, I'm like, sorry, buddy. And he's why, like, why were you sorry? Because I, I invited the guy over the table, and I always yeah. get people in Rowdy situations guys, because yeah. of, uh, I, 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 love <laughs> I love weirdos. I love weirdos. Like Adam, I just <laughs> Adam was just in Singapore, and he asked me, he's like, "Do you?" Uh, actually, Abby asked, was like, "Do you know anybody uh, in Singapore?" I'm like, "I do know somebody in Singapore." <laughs> oh, Abby, no. And so then I, I sent him out, forgetting to mention, ah, yeah, he uh, he loves Mein Kampf, and uh, 
<laughs> doesn't care for the Jews much, Adam, of course, being half Jewish. <laughs> and so they go out, and the first thing the guy does is he takes them to the, to the red light district so they can drink cheap beer with hookers. And then, uh, and then he starts going, you know, Hitler had it right. Like, and Adam's oh, just God. like, is this guy just joking with me? And then uh, uh, I, get, then I get fired a message like an hour later. He's like, what the fuck's with your friends, man? Because <laughs> the other friend you met through me, Paul Duffy, punched him the first time they met. And, like, <laughs> Around all sorts of punchers. Yeah. So how do you get along with these guys? Because, like, for example, if they meet someone else, they're going to have these kind of fucked up situations. But for you, like, you're not a violent guy at all. No, no, no. no. People want to get violent with you being, you're so big, right? They're like, I could beat you up. Have you ever ever beat a person (laughs) up? Uh, Hockey. Hockey Hockey fights. Uh, I was in a bar fight, the last fight I can remember when I was, like, 21. Mm. And it was just because uh, some guy had, like, groped my friend. And I was drunk and like, I'm gonna be a man! <laughs> just like, beat the, beat the crap out of him. But I I never really got beat up. And I never, but I never really got in fights. Like, Not even in Korea at all? Uh, well, no, I've had army guys come up to me and like push on me and shit. Um, but I just Maybe like, trying to and I just guys. like, stop! <laughs> like, just stop! Stop like, it. Yeah, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't, dude, I don't wanna fight. <laughs> like, I don't, th- th- what do you not get? I don't wanna fight here. <laughs> I well, I worked at a bowling alley. That was my first job after university, and uh, <laughs> that's a perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right here I am, world, huh? And uh, I remember, like, on a, there's a cosmic bowling night, and it's when white trash comes out, and then like middle schoolers, you know, and middle school white trash, I guess. Uh, and so it's like just like uh, like fluorescent lights and music and pop music and stuff like that, and people are bowling. And uh, this one redneck guy was in there just being a jerk. I don't remember exactly what happened, but like, uh, he was causing some kind of trouble up on the up on the lanes. And my little buddy, little coworker, tiny guy, ran out. He ran first, and I ran behind him. And the big guy, like this redneck, like pushed the guy down. My my coworker and I, like, I was behind him. I grabbed him on the shoulder, and. I kind of spun him around, and then he turns around and he goes, "Who the fuck are you? I'm gonna kill you!" <laughs> and uh, he didn't punch me, but I I know I really don't want to get punched. Like the first thing I thought was, "Oh my god, my glasses!" Like yeah. that's literally the first thing I thought. <laughs> I was like, "My glasses!" And uh, he's like, "I would just kill this person if I punch." He said, "I'm gonna kill you." Who are you? So then after that, he just like go and just let him. And then I just, wants, I just like, did a little shimmy away. <laughs> <laughs> curled up in the fetal position. <laughs> like, don't hurt me. <laughs> Or you played dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the only real fight I ever had when I was like eight years old was back in Canada, and there we didn't have a lot of grass. Everything was all just concrete, so we just played like handball on the street, mm-hmm. on the walls and stuff. And I was with my buddy Andrew Rodriguez and Kevin Mello, and they were just chilling there. This one fucking kid, Eric Skeef, he just came out of nowhere and he just took the ball, the tennis ball, away from us. Mm-hmm. Kevin Mello, sweetest guy ever, always the funniest guy. And he's like, "What are you doing, man?" And the guy just pushed him because. What are you gonna do about it? Pure like, like you know, yeah. elementary school situation, and then push him like, man, like don't hit Kevin. Another time I was doing taekwondo, <laughs> so he's like, what are you? Gonna do? <laughs> yeah, so I did this, and then I did a turning kick, and I like, boom, I hit him on the face, oh, wow. and he just like, Poof, and he went down, and he was like bleeding, and we're just like. Let's get out of here. We start running, right? <laughs> and then before I left, he kind of looked at me, and he was—he just like drools on it. He's like, "Don't worry, I won't tell nobody." <laughs> and we just fucking ran. We came back around. You ran away to Korea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never came back. Never. Bruce Lee story. I didn't have to get my black belt. I just fucking did that. I killed a man once in fifth grade. Yeah, <laughs> it was he wasn't a man, but he killed a child. Big yeah. <laughs> cities, yeah. Bodies are better. If you're still proud of that, does that make it worse? Like, <laughs> like I killed a kid once. <laughs> I mean, I was a kid too, but. Can you give me that one dead. guy who punched the the soccer referee in a in a soccer game and he died? Whoa! Like he a was bandit like, or? No, no. He was like playing in the in the soccer game for like in high school. He was like 16 years old. It happened somewhere in the states. Yeah. And then the referee just gave him a, a call, like a yellow card, and the kid freaked out and punched him. And the the man he fell down and then. He was complaining that it was hurting, and then later took him to the hospital, and he died. Oh, wow. Like, that's so fucked up a situation, and especially when you're 16, you're like, oh my god, I just... Killed somebody. That that one, punch. one punch. One punch, yeah. I have, this is, I have, this is similar, but not. Last night, <laughs> so I was, I was, I, I was a f- playing cards, just a house game, a normal house game with friends. <laughs> playing cards. Strange, I get a text. I killed a man. <laughs> it wasn't my party. No, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Well, 
If you want to be that way, that's fine. I'll tell Wolf in the story. Uh, and else. <laughs> uh, but I, we were playing cards. I had pocket aces, first time in a while. Like I had so a pair of aces in the in the hole, and uh, cards are coming out. Uh, I go all in, and my friend calls. He goes all in, and he. This is on the fourth card that comes up, and then I throw down my aces. He throws down queens. There's nothing on the board, so I'm like, nice. There's like two cards in the deck that will win, and. River comes, it's a queen. And I had just been handed a banana. <laughs> I had just been handed a banana. I was like, yeah, I'll eat that banana. And I, <laughs> as soon as that happened, I took the banana and I chucked it as hard as I could against the wall and I stormed out <laughs> without saying a word. And I was just like, mm, smash, banana, out. <laughs> and I went and I chugged a beer. And <laughs> it was just so frustrating. <laughs> Like, I wish I had video footage of that. He <laughs> really hates bananas. <laughs> Fuck bananas. <laughs> but the funny thing is that at that house, my uh, my friend, they, they have a dog, and I was supposed to give some of that banana to that dog. And, uh, <laughs> and but he won't eat it from the ground. <laughs> That's an upset dog. <laughs> and as soon as I checked it, I heard his owner, Lacey, she goes, Oh, poor Raul. Because <laughs> he wouldn't get any banana. <laughs> Raul the dog. Uh, so what do you guys think of uh, uh, in terms of getting more performance now you've got had like Tom Rose you had Kyle Kinane you had Bronner and stuff you had uh, who else was the thing here? James Adoni yeah James, James Adoni mm -hmm. so what do you guys think you guys want to have come up for the next show well we're so, like in development uh, we're constantly like just contacting people we would like to do shows every few months uh, and so we're contacting people to get here in August and November and uh, so I mean and it's just kind of like before anything is set in stone we're just throwing stuff out there to see if people mm -hmm. are interested what about your dream comedians to come to Korea what, what was the question Who's dream comedian to come out to Korea well I personally love Stan Hope or um do you think he would last in Korea? Like, like in, in terms of like, yeah, like just coming out here and just like. I heard he's, he has to have his, uh, he has to have a manager come with he's him. He's very particular. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a particular kind um, of Him, he would be great. Uh, Eugene Merman, I'd love. Uh, Pat Oswalt, of course, but a little yeah. bit hard. But like, you know, in a couple years, if we continue to do this regularly, like, you know, the guys that we've, worked with they have worked with the best you know what I mean like they all they know everyone from the bottom of the comedy totem pole that you've never heard of to Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. you know Tom Rhodes is buddies with Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. they know each other and like so I'm not saying like it's it would be an absolute dream we could find a you know, big enough venue and that kind of stuff Louis C.K. would sell out huge shows multiple nights sure. and uh, but I mean that's that's just such a huge undertaking even mm -hmm. you know we've learned that bringing in a couple guys is a lot of work and you know but it's totally worth it. And so far, like everyone, those comedians, they've been g g pretty much giving good reviews to you guys as well, right? Because none of them had a bad experience at all at every time they go um, to Korea. They all love it and they go home and tell everybody about it. Mm -hmm. they, uh, I mean, yeah. like, uh, Kyle went back the first night and told everybody, he did a show with YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube Live, yeah, that Sunday that he flew back and he told all the comedians right there and some of the ones we contacted were like, oh yeah, Kyle just told us how great this was. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, wow, this, wow, awesome. I didn't think we'd get asked him. Like Nate, yeah, did that. Uh, like, uh, it's, you know, if a comedian has a if bad time, they go home and they don't have good things to say, then we haven't done our job. You know, like, I look at it as a way for comedians to have a great experience just as much as the audience members, you know, because I think it's cool to travel, and, I mean, that's why we're all here, and uh, to be able to do comedy and, and have a trip and work and... It's, it's great, you know, I think it's a super cool idea, and we just want guys that want to do it, you know what I mean, we don't want to, like, if someone, you know, let's say, you know, a big name, just throwing, if Patton Oswalt, if he wanted to come here and do that, like, how cool is that, but if it wasn't really his cup of tea, then he shouldn't, you know what I mean, Exactly. so, uh, just we want people on board who want to be part of the team, I guess, and you know, Kyle and Matt, they both loved it, and it was awesome. Yeah, and then they, they've done a, a few other things. Like, do you guys give them, like, a certain types of experiences that you want them to have if they're first coming to Korea? Like, when they first come in here, you're like, hey, you gotta try the duck soup, or you gotta try, like, some cell or, like, fucking... Uh, well, usually, yeah, usually they ask us food first, like, mm -hmm. what's good to eat, and we take them... 
Guns of Tom. Yeah, you, we throw we throw a couple names out and let them kind of choose what they want and then like, choose their own adventure kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, we've, I mean, I guess just with Canadian Leafs, we did the Doctor Fish and he loved that, and so we always kind of suggest. The oh, Doctor really? Fish. Yeah. It is one of my, the funniest things ever, Jeff. And he said it's one of his top five favorite experiences in his life. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I guess we, it is. Actually. The three of us just sitting in there giggling like schoolgirls. Yeah, like, it was just, my first time and his first and time, yeah. and mm-hmm. yeah. we were going bananas. Well, it was just like. Have you ever been to Dark Yeah, I've been to Oh, Darker, so yeah. ticklish. Yeah, mm-hmm. just like, I, we, I went one other time and it wasn't as ticklish, but the first time, uh, we were just like, just cracking up. And we were already in a real weird mood, like we had a couple beers, when we went to the... <laughs> You've been already drunk and just went to Yeah, you, you have to go get a drink course, and, uh, yeah. and then, but <laughs> we were sitting down in the cafe, do you remember this? Mm-hmm. Like, Jeff's sitting in his chair, and he's a big guy, and... Uh, the ch- like I saw, all of a sudden see Jeff like lowering and I didn't know it was happening and then he falls on the ground because the two front legs of the chair just <laughs> bent just up like it. this <laughs> and we're just like laughing already and, uh, <laughs> but it was fun and then, yeah it's, it was uh, Dr. Fish so Dr. Fish is a real good thing <laughs> yeah. oh, or, or you know we took the train um, Nori Bong's always Nori there. Bong on the train mm-hmm. is a blast. Uh, Talk about on the train. Oh yeah, have you been on the subway? Oh train? right, right. Okay. I thought you just meant subway train. Oh, yeah. you're that guy. Yeah, yeah. we're just corners. we bring the Nori Bong. <laughs> I'm all out of love. I'm so lost. <laughs> I'm song. sure Koreans would love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, sit with me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun sketch. That'd be a fun bit. Uh, <laughs> but. uh you guys actually did laugh tracks too before, right? Mm-hmm. So, would you, what you guys didn't want to do that? For this well, time? that was our friend Adam, Adam Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. He he set that up with doing comedy on the train. So, and that was a lot of fun. That was a cool experience. You know, Tom Rhodes was all for it, and it was you know pretty pretty cool. How did you, how did you find the Koreans to get when they came in? I wasn't like, there, but uh, they, they knew something was going on. Like well, was they when they the, at first we got on at Itaewon Station, and they were like. Uh, 20 foreigners that just jumped on the train all together, which is no big deal in, in Itaewon, but uh, uh, pardon, uh, we started felt like we went up there and we started doing comedy, like we started doing sets and Koreans were like kind of weirded out by it and, and that's what I thought was the funnest part I wish there would have been more of that kind of reaction, those reactionary shots and stuff like that uh, because that's where I think the real comedy is, it's not us doing our jokes it's people it's doing it in a weird place exactly. and the reaction but some people that was that was, see again that was my favorite thing was when like a guy got on and was just like what the hell and I just started talking to him on a microphone <laughs> like <laughs> he's like what the hell is going on and uh so but most people were laughing you know there was one car and there were a lot of Korean people laughing and uh our friends were there all having a good time so it was uh you know if we were on it too much longer we probably would have been Busted by the caps, but I don't know. It was fun. And you guys actually both performed, obviously, out of Korea too, right? Because you went back home, you went, to, and you did the same thing back in LA, right? Well, Jeff's done a lot more at home. I have only, I've ninety-five percent of my comedy's been done here in Korea, and uh, but when I go back, I always make an effort to do mics. That's definitely something I love to do is to do mics in as many places as possible. Because if we're just doing it in, in Itaewon, you're gonna get you know, jaded, and it's not, you're not going to have your finger on the pulse as much, necessarily. Your, your voice is going to become too, I don't know, too narrow, I think. Especially more just Koreans centralized. Yeah, yeah, jokes yeah. And stuff, like. yeah, yeah. But when I, I mean, I tell a lot of Korean jokes when I go back, and like, my bit on Chingu's or whatever translates really well. Like, it's a funny little bit that people get, and I can talk about, because I think it's, you know, whether jokes are about a place, if you can re- make people relate to it somehow, then you're going to be okay. Because everyone can relate to stuff like being an outsider or feeling different or just not understanding what's happening. And that's just our life all the time in Korea. So what do you guys think about like uh, the honestness in terms of like back, you know, out of Korea and in Korea? Like, do you find them a little bit more apprehensive or way too conservative here at the times? Or just that they just kind of heard it all? Or? Uh, the audience? Yeah, um, uh, when you're performing, like for example, if you're performing, you know, you know, maybe in just, you know, stand up soul, like in an RMT audience is like a woman, Will Fritz. <laughs> 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 you gotta treat it right. You gotta stroke it, poke it. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. They were. It, 
I, I think maybe they're a little bit tougher of a sell because they're used to seeing comedy a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kind of people that go out back home. Because mm-hmm. um, here, I mean, it's a treat because, I mean, you're in Korea most of the time, but for this little portion, I'm in, I'm back home kind of. I'm watching like something I would see back home. Um, but back there, they're already, I mean, the comedy audience, they're used to going to comic clubs, they're used to seeing comedians, so I think they, they, they like to be dazzled a little bit more, I think. But it can be a good and bad thing, right, if they're used to seeing comedy, because well, they're there for the show. Well, it's good and bad, yeah. You know, they're there, and they're, if it's funny, they're going to laugh, you know, which I, and I think sometimes audiences, where how we perform, they're not there for a show a lot of the time and so they're just there and they're like who's this guy talking over me trying to hit on this girl Mm -hmm. and so it's just kind of like a lack of focus sometimes but uh, I mean I haven't done as much at comedy clubs and stuff but when I have performed on like good mics in Mm -hmm. the states it's a treat it's nice it's really nice because people are listening they're there to pay attention and if you suck you suck and they're not going to laugh and you're going to get honest feedback Mm -hmm. that's cool about that's the cool thing about comedy as an art form is because it, you get feedback right now. I'm like, oh, I have a joke. I'm going to go tell it right now. Absolutely. And then, oh, it's not good. <laughs> like, you know, like, there might be something there, but you get that feedback immediately because it's a very, it's a very unique form in that way. Yeah, and it's right. also really hard that way, too, because it's not like music. People can always ask for the cover again and again. If you go to, like, a Guns N' Roses or Bon Jovi concert, you're going to hear only the classics, but if you do that with, like, a comedy album or something, it's like, yeah, it starts yeah. to lose its... I don't know it's intensity or something after I've always wanted stuff. to do uh, you can cover cover another comedian's work uh-huh. just like if you're doing a cover of a, if you're a band and you get up and do someone else's song yeah that, like yeah okay let's do this one from uh, from Bill Cosby's album you just gotta preface everyone yeah you just gotta preface it all well or you just get up and you do the act and everyone's like wow that's great and they're like yeah well I mean that one was Cosby that uh, one was yeah. Oswald <laughs> as long as you're not trying to be sneaky and hide it as yours like lip syncing yeah. contest, like, <laughs> like tribute, uh, like you got tribute artists, you know, and tribute comedians. We've talked. I think Tony has talked about doing a tribute night, just like for Carlin or something like that. I don't know, which is kind yeah, of that was a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Does that even exist though? Any tribute comedies? Not that I know. But, mm-hmm. uh, there, I mean, it's all roast style, I guess. Right? That's the the tribute that comedians mm-hmm. do. Have you seen that one? Uh, I think the Nerdist they work on it where they do like kind of improv stand up where they have like three or just a group of comedians they come and they have no material prepared whatsoever yeah. but there's a screen where both the audience and the comedian can see it and it has like a really weird premise like uh, yeah like this, I don't know, Kyle, Kyle was telling us about this uh, the set list yeah the set list show yeah. and you, you just gotta you get you go up and they give you a set list like bullets like chicken mm-hmm. pen banana and then you just gotta like talk as if you knew what you were talking about as if it was something you'd written you can't you can't comment on the fact that this is a thing that I'm forced to do you have to like own it right yeah yeah and I love that I think I it's think great it's really fun it's I, I have this I it's kind of similar it's a game I play in class it's called why did you do that and so uh, I'll put something on my head the students will write down something I did like had a baby or became a woman mm-hmm. or robbed a bank mm-hmm. and they'll and then I won't know and I'll put it on my head and then they'll ask me why did you do that and I'll go because I was bored you mm-hmm. know and if it, it says like had a sex change then they just laugh they mm-hmm. lose it and then they it's a guessing game it's essentially an improv game mm-hmm. and I, what I tell the students is you always have to act like you know what's up there you have to answer your questions with confidence mm-hmm. because if you you're confident when you're talking People are going to go to, want to go with you. Mm-hmm. You might, because it's like, okay, I'm safe with this person. They know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And that's what I try to convey in class. And that's what people, some comedians, really do super amazingly well. Mm-hmm. You know? and, yeah, even like going into class, you and your kids can be kind of like a whole stand-up thing itself, right? Because by then, that's where you, like even for your subject, like you have like a lot of material with your kids and stuff. Although I teach adults now, so... Yeah. It's, it's completely different. It's like, they don't give you any slack at all. Oh, man. I, uh... No, not really. They're really, really? complacent. They're, uh, um, oh, that's a bummer. They're... But no, they're... They're a bummer. <laughs> they're, they're fun. <laughs> I, I bring them into it. Like, yeah, uh, okay. Like, uh... It's great. I, I bring them into silliness. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, but, uh... But it's also nice to know that they'll just shut up. Like, they're, they're gonna be quiet. Oh, my God. It's so them. nice not to have to worry about disciplinary stuff. Like, yeah. And the level of conversation always you can get much more high right? You guys talk about anything. Oh, we talk about blowjobs and stuff. Like, uh, really? Well, because we watch What's friends. We watch friends, and so 
We have to talk about. There's a lot of sex jokes on Friends. You talk about, you know, why did why did Rachel say, "Oh, I'll finish it myself," and then go into her bedroom alone? Mm-hmm. Like, well, because she's gonna go put her hand on her vagina and masturbate. You said that. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, and then the guy's like, "Wait, so she's going to go use her hand?" I'm like, "I don't know. Maybe she's got toys. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, the door's closed. I don't know what's going on." Yeah. And like, they don't let us in. And the, nobody's really uncomfortable. The Koreans are really open and honest. Like, one girl was sick one day and. I was like, uh, like, oh, you're sick today? She goes, oh, yeah, my period. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, just say you're sick. <laughs> like, we don't, our culture, we don't, we usually don't announce that out too yeah. loudly. Whenever a student, I work at a women's university, and whenever a student is like, uh, bathroom, I'm just like, yeah, just go. I'm not even going to, well, what's wrong? What's the problem? Why do you, why do you need to go to the bathroom? You know, because like, as a kid, you make up any excuse to get into the restroom because it's, I don't know, magical. Uh, well, at my school, they, I mean, they pay 10 grand to do a six months intensive. And like, wow. if they need to get up and go to the bathroom, yeah. it, you it's go, their, it's your, you're yeah, just dropping you 10 grand. That. Exactly. That's how I see. You know, get a free classes. lifetime hall pass. Like, you know, if you're wasting your money, yeah, <laughs> like, right? you go ahead. Like, they're always coming up with like, oh, I have to go to, because my hot water thing Whatever. broke. And yeah, I'm like, go, yeah. see ya. It's, like, your, it's your call. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. Like, yeah. did you break the hot water thing yourself? No, go. Right. Have you wronged me? It's making it easier for me, I guess, if we do not hear. Leave, now. Malika! <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys find, um, the, in terms of, I guess, source or inspiration that you get from Korea? Because there's so many weird things that happen to us constantly. After a while, you get so jaded. It kind of takes a long time to kind of look around and get some ideas. But is there any places where you usually can get something? I mean, you just keep your eyes open. That's that's where any good material comes from. I think then you you carry a notebook around or your, I don't know, uh, phone for memos. Yeah, exactly okay. memos and just I I have tons of stuff I see on the subway that I think is funny or like just subway's just, always something going on. There. There's yeah. something weird a lot of times today. Ugh, I was next to this this mom and her <laughs> two sons that were like four and two and. They just sucked. Like, they were just yelling and running around and, like, touching strangers on the laps. And I was like, that's so inappropriate. Get your kids in line, woman. And I was like, ugh, I never want to have two Korean sons. Yeah. <laughs> that was the sound of a really disgusted movie. It's just like, going on the subway doesn't need to be any harder. Like, why would you want to do that? Like, by having two tiny people to take care of. It was really weird. And they were just yelling and crying and, like, dragging each other. They're, like, hanging from the things. Like, not... But, like... Yeah. I felt they were guys. I wanted to see one of them fall, unfortunately. I wanted You to just see. witnessed a woman who just kind of broke down inside. And she could not function physically, probably. She's just like, I just give up. She seems so... She, yeah, she you seems know, like, so done with it all. Yeah. She's, just, she's like, she she's just, just gave like, up on her I'm kids. I'm just letting my kids do their own thing. I'm not even... I'm, I'm gonna strap the one to my back when I leave. But other than that, like, they're on their own. I wonder, like, some parents are just, I can't wait to beat the shit out of you when we get home. Like, because sometimes when you see those kids, like, you know, Koreans are always looking at each other, and when you see something like that, it's just like, oh, did you do it? But you don't want to look like you're a bad parent. They'll be like, all right, sit down, all right, hmm. She smacked, she smacked, she smacked her kid in the head today. Like, her, her young kid, yeah, she gave him a smack. I was like, jeez, she's she like, a, don't fuck with me. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Just give the mom eyes. So, like, you know what's coming. You yeah. know what's coming if you. Yeah, Mama, it's Silence. pretty scary. Silence does enough. Yeah, yeah my, my dad used to be so scary that I kind of laugh when he got mad. Mm-hmm. And that would make it worse. Mm-hmm. He's like, what, are you using this phone? Huh? And I was like, <laughs> like, like one of those nervous things that go on. Yeah. You guys never had anything like that before? You never got beaten by you, your parents or anything? I got the paddle probably once or twice when I was a kid. Paddle? Uh, yeah, it, wow. it, it, was, it was one that Not my, even a bell? my parents had got from like a novelty store. Uh, so it, it had something funny on it too, and then uh, yeah, I, I mean they used the paddle when I was probably when I was like four or five still, but then they kind of abandoned it after a while. But they that was it. I mean my parents weren't scary people at all. They were all, they were really my mom was you know Betty Crocker, just like a sweet old woman. Your and then Betty Crocker. I had don't tell many people this, but um, the world is gonna know. Well. Yeah, I guess so. Sorry, <laughs> mom, I outed you. <laughs> uh, my dad was uh, he, uh, he was. More or less a nice guy. He was a violent guy at all. I don't. I don't believe that he's ever been in a fight in his life. Who would you say were the more most funnier out of the two? <laughs> Both terrible. Yeah. They're. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I guess I'd go my dad, but that's really stretching it. The funniest person in my family was my uncle Ross. Mm-hmm. He was the funniest guy. Why? 
Oh, he was, um, <clears throat> you'd go to his house, he lived in Edmonton, you'd go to his house, like, on a family trip, oh, right. and you'd family. walk in, and <laughs> you really know Canada. <laughs> uh, you'd walk in, and the house was booby-trapped for all the kids, like, uh, with novelty stuff. He loved going to the novelty store, and, like, like you'd go, oh, peanuts. this, you'd be like, oh, there's candy, and you'd reach, and one of them would explode in front of you. <laughs> or, like, he'd give you this book, he's like, this is a really good book, That's you should read it. Lost his hand. And then he'd, he'd open it up, and it would explode, and the skeleton would pop out. And, uh, but the best thing ever was, uh... The day he came over and gave me the fart jar, and uh, he's like, "All right, the rule in the house is, if you fart, you gotta fart in the jar. Mm-hmm. Seal it really quick, and then you gotta write down the date and time that you farted, and then open it up really quick and throw the paper in and seal it again." <laughs> and so he gives me this jar, and I immediately open it up and I look, and there's all these pieces of paper with dates and times <laughs> written on it and names. <laughs> just uh, well, just not not who did it, just oh, dates okay. and times. And then he saw the lid off. He's like, you're letting them out! And, like, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, he was a wonderful man. He used to love taking me to the magic shop and to the novelty shop. Do you think that has time. anything to do with why you won't fart in front of your friends, the fart jar? Uh, <laughs> you still have a fart jar. I, I actually still have the fart jar, and I have Phineas P. Fart, which was this little thing that you squeeze and goes... Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's shaped like a person. That's why he's got a name. Uh, and uh, It's not just a... Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's green. Phineas P. Fart. He looks like the Just for Laughs uh, little gremlin. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, but in Canada. I, that could be why I don't... Actually, no, I just don't like to fart around friends because I just don't like when they fart around me. So it's, Pongu. Koreans just like the word Pongu. Yeah. It just makes sense. It's mm-hmm. pure etiquette right there. <laughs> it's, the, it's the kindest thing about Jeff. I walk, yeah, I walk where there's nobody and then I fart. Or I go to the bathroom and I fart. Like, you know, <laughs> As you should. Yeah. You know what I realized is one time, one time I was on the toilet in a public restroom and then I hear someone walk in and they pee and they fart and I'm on the toilet and I still laugh. Like, <laughs> I still, I'm like, even when I'm taking a dump, farts are pretty funny. Nope, yep, they're pretty funny. <laughs> you like, did, did he hear you laugh too? Probably. probably laugh so there's laugh this laugh. crazy person on the toilet just laughing while he's pooping in there. Well, now he's all embarrassed going, did I do it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, is that a foreigner Maybe laugh? it was you. Maybe you came into the bathroom to fart in private. I, but I don't pee and fart at the same time. With you. <laughs> I know, that's another rule? Why? What would that that's, that's like sneezing and coughing. Because I need full concentration if I'm farting because you know you, you don't want to push it, right? Like you never know. It could be that that time that you do finally shat yourself. Yeah. Have, has that ever happened? Never. Uh, and uh, I'm I have a clean record and I want to keep it that way. Uh, it came very close this morning, actually. But, uh, I, uh, I I was in Rome recently with our with our good friend John Week, and uh, he uh, we were at the Sistine Chapel. It's amazing. I'm, oh, I'm in there. I'm crying like tears coming out of my. Face <laughs> and I'm like looking up, and it's just awesome. It's very cool. It's mm-hmm. super moving. And uh, we leave after a little while, and uh, John he says to me, he goes, "I just came the closest I've ever been to sharding." Uh, <laughs> so John too. <laughs> and it was in the middle of the, it's like I'm so moved by this beauty. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's just like it just released the bowels of me, like. That's the, the perfect head. place for a shard, I would say. So this is the old shed. Yeah. Like, literally. Just like let go of all bodily functions. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, John. I just. John, that was a great story. You. I hope you come by next time. It's a short story. It's <laughs> a totally short story. Like, I'm a short story writer. <laughs> <laughs> William Shatner. Uh, Anyways, I think that's enough time for us, guys. It's already past 2 37. You've had enough. Yeah. It's almost an hour. But, uh,. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, thanks a lot, guys, for coming out. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having us. I'm looking forward to the next stand up soul. That's going to be coming up this Thursday. Who's hosting that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some Asian guy? K? K Kim? I think it's some Ecuadorian guy. Some Ecuadorian, yeah. yeah. Albert, he's coming back. Yeah. It's going to be me. I'm going to be going up there. I'm going to be hosting. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And that Friday is going to be a weekend. Holiday, mm-hmm. so it's Thursday. 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 Oh, Thursday's the holiday. So Friday's Friday, no. gotta go back to work. You got yep. some people do, not me. I got the day. That's oh. dumb. Well, anyways, Thursday's a free day, so come out, you fuckers. Don't be, don't be little bitches. Hey, let's guess how many people are gonna watch this in the first three days. What I'm guessing first four, three days, fourteen. Fourteen? I'll yeah. say eight. Eight. Okay. <laughs> I'll go in between and say ten. All right. What, what about one dollar? Yeah, winner winner takes a dollar. Price is right rules? Uh, I'm, I'm frugal right now. A dollar, <laughs> make or break me. That's Buy a beer. Buy a beer at Stand Up Soul. <laughs> okay, so what was it? Eight. Buy Stand Up Soul. Buy Stand Up Soul. Let's see how many people oh, have watched well, it. Oh, then it's going to go up to... Okay, I mean, right. I'm oh, on the screen, okay, hold on, so it's going to be... <laughs> You're going to promote it. It's at least on 16. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
you'll be watching it 16 times yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get okay, okay. Let's do step by stand up salt. Uh, okay. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess 46. 46. Wow, you're really nice. I'm you're, going up. Well, he's I'm, going on yeah, the website. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be refreshed. Refresh. Refresh. Yeah. Well, off to 46, I'll go up to 57. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go uh, Michael Jordan. 23. 23. There it 23 is. 23 is a good number. Yeah, I you went half of what I did. That's, did you know that? That's why I guessed Cox. The 23 Cox on Chat Roulette earlier. Oh, yeah. It's, my, it's my go-to number. Jordan layup style. Okay. So 23 for Jeff. 46? Yeah. Uh, I'll go 57. 57. Okay. What's, so, what's your high? My high? Who's at the top leaderboard right now? Um, I think viewed? it was uh, on YouTube. It was, uh, what's his name? Uh, James. James Williams. James Williams. Yeah, he did like creator of Transformers. Yes, he did uh, like 127 or something like that. Wow, that's man. the most so far for him. Aaron, my Aaron Brockovich on YouTube is at fifteen thousand. There you wow. go. Wow, what is it? Aaron. Aaron Brockovich. Movies in a minute. Movies in a minute. I added famous movies to a minute. All right. He had a great thumbnail for that too, right? Check it out. Had a what? Great thumbnail. Oh People yeah. See, it's all about the it's thumbnail tits. too, right? It's tits. That's what. <laughs> it's <laughs> always tits. It it's always tits. gets me. Tits gets, tits gets me. All right, so let's see what happens, guys. So 23 for Jeff, 46 for Rudy, 57 for myself. By the end of three days, so today's the second, three, four, five, on the fifth. That's like on Wednesday. That's like the day before I up so. And then the winner, what, has to buy a beer? <laughs> gets punched in the face. Gets punched in the face. Gets punched in the face, in the neck, or in the sternum. So come out to YouTube. If come, come out to YouTube. Come out to YouTube. YouTube. Come on, all you nanobites. <laughs> Show us what you YouTube's got. YouTube's a place, right? You can just go there. Right beside Craigslist. I'm an idiot. I'm too over for this. <laughs> oh, it all comes down. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you guys later. And set up soul this Thursday at 9.39-ish. Toodles. Right. Toodles.